The intent of this video is to review the effectiveness of late war Japanese self-sealing fuel tanks. Self-sealing fuel tanks are but one of the features allies and Axis belligerents adopted to reduce the vulnerability of their aircraft. One of the most economical means of destroying an enemy aircraft is by setting the enemy's fuel tank on fire or fuel tank explosions, as discussed in this 1948 declassified report, Effectiveness of Incendiary Ammunition Against Aircraft Fuel Tanks. All the reports shown in this video are declassified. Early Japanese aircraft design placed a premium on maneuverability, range, and speed at the expense of pilot plane survivability. This design consideration necessitated a lightweight aircraft. No armor or self-sealing tanks were adopted in the early generation of fighters, as discussed in this 1947 Japanese Air War Weapons and Tactics U.S. Strategic Bombing Survey report. This turned out to be a tragic mistake. After many aircraft and pilot losses in 1947, aircraft armor and leak-resistant fuel tanks were adopted in all new designs. It is challenging to tell the self-sealing fuel tank story as a Japanese-built 90 wartime aircraft which included 164 variations of the basic models. The 1947 U.S. Strategic Bomber Survey report titled The Japanese Aircraft Industry indicated the Japanese suffered from aircraft modelitis. The Japanese aircraft were produced by 16 different manufacturers, as shown in this chart from the same source. U.S. self-sealing fuel tanks were designed to stop a leak from a 50 caliber bullet. A U.S. self-sealing fuel tank consists of a thick rubber bladder, as shown in this view of the B-29 Bombers 640-gallon optional Bombay tank. This image shows the location of the bomber's self-sealing fuel tanks. The fuel tank's wall is at a nominal thickness of 0.32 inches and is comprised of six layers. The next to fuel layer is a 0.045 inch thick nitrile rubber. Layer 2 is a nylon diffusion barrier. Layer 3 consists of a gooey natural rubber, like tire slime. Layer 4 is a rayon fabric. Layer 5 is another gooey natural rubber. Layer 6 is a nitrile rubber covered fabric. The B-29 tanks are internally braced so they maintain their shape as shown in this view from the B-29 GenFam manual. As a bullet penetrates this tank, a hole equating to the bullet's diameter will pass through the tank's six layers. The tank's 100 octane fuel will contact the natural rubber layers. The natural rubber will expand when in contact with the fuel and fill the bullet holes, terminating the leak. This clip shows a full self-sealing fuel tank exposed to machine gun fire. No fuel tank leakage occurred. This clip shows the installation of a self-sealing fuel tank in the consolidated B-24 Liberator bomber. Early Japanese aircraft like the Zeke or Zero's fuel cells were very vulnerable to U.S. gunfire as they did not adopt self-sealing or a leak-resistant design. The Zero's fuel is not in a rubber bladder. It resides in a thin gauge welded aluminum box. The fuel is sloshing around within this box. A 50 caliber bullet would cause at a minimum a fuel leak or could induce a hydraulic shock effect within the fuel cell. The hydraulic shock overpressure load may destroy the lightly constructed fuel cell and wing releasing the fuel. The subsequent 50 caliber tracers, incendiary, or armor piercing incendiary rounds would pass through the released fuel, now very flammable, as the liberated fuel has mixed with the air stream. The result would be a destroyed Japanese aircraft due to catastrophic wing rupture and fire, like shown in these images. Bomber Command reviewed the vulnerability of Japanese bomber interceptors to B-29 gunners and in February 1945 released an operations analysis document, Combat Performance of the Remote Control Turrets of the B-29 Aircraft. The data shows that in the first 25 missions, B-29 gunners destroyed 130 Japanese aircraft. Of the 130 planes destroyed, 54% of the planes were destroyed by the aircraft being on fire. 23% the pilot was killed or wounded, 8% the plane exploded, 7% the plane broke apart and was on fire, 4% the plane just broke apart, 4% the plane's controls were damaged, engine failure, or the pilot bailed out. 
62% of Japanese enemy bomber interceptors were destroyed by a fuel-related cause. Bomber Command realized the vulnerability of Japanese bomber interceptors fuel tanks, and the B-29 bomber's machine gun turret belt mixes were changed from a repeating two armor piercing, two incendiary, and a single tracer, to an ammo belt mix of 100% armor piercing incendiary cartridges. The Japanese adopted leak-resistant fuel tanks in their next-generation fighters and bombers after the large losses in 1943. The tanks consisted of a half-inch thick single or three-ply rubber bladder. The U.S. conducted tests on the effectiveness of captured Japanese leak-resistant fuel tanks. The Japanese fuel cells were ineffective in plugging 50 caliber bullet holes. The Japanese gave up the possibility of a successful leak-proof tank as a futile quest, as quoted in the reference document shown earlier. The report goes on to state, most tanks were abandoned as too complicated and troublesome. The Japanese Judy had neither pilot nor fuel protection. The valve also entered service without pilot or fuel protection. These diagrams were provided to U.S. pilots and bomber gunners to indicate the enemy aircraft's vulnerabilities and armament. The next generation Oscar IIs were outfitted with pilot armor and protected fuel tank material. The leak proofing material performed poorly against the 50 caliber cartridge. This chart shows a Japanese Tojo II fighter with an ineffective leak resistant fuel tank, as with the George II and Frank I fighters. In summary, the Japanese never perfected an effective self-sealing fuel tank design. They did adopt ineffective leak-resistant tanks, but it was too late. The U.S. took advantage of the Japanese aircraft vulnerability and quickly modified their ammo belt mixes to include more effective armor-piercing incendiary 50 caliber cartridges. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.